Hi everyone and I hope you're well. Today I'm going to do a video about narrowband filters and uh, more specifically the S2 narrowband filter that I've recently purchased by Antlia. So are the Antlia 3 nanometer filters any good? Well stick around and hopefully I can answer that question for you. My name's Glenn and you're watching Astro Bloke. So I've been doing narrowband imaging for some time now, but um, I've always had a little issue with the S2 filter in my collection. So when I started off with narrowband, all I had initially was some Altair Astro uh, 6.5 and 7 nanometer um, SHO filters. And I wanted to upgrade those, and I was able to buy two chroma filters on the used market. So they were a, a sort of decent price. And I was able to get the HA and the O3 and both at three nanometer. Now they made an enormous difference to my imaging. Being in a ball six uh, zone, I've got quite a bit of light pollution around, but these made a big, big difference. Unfortunately, at the time, I couldn't get an S2 filter to match those. Um, so I ended up with a Bader four and a half nanometer filter um, I've got the case here so and um, you know it comes with good reviews and a really good filter so I had this in with my two chroma filters um, but I was having a bit of an issue um, and I, I realized it when I compared my data with other people that were taking SHO data what I noticed was um, I was getting some detail but it was so faint um, it was almost like um, I wasn't I, would, I, I just wasn't getting the same signal to noise ratio or, or strength that other people were getting and um, I just assumed that it was my light pollution that was causing the problem so um, I just thought maybe I've got a high sulfur light pollution it's washing it out and, um, and that was that so the S2 filter, although I wasn't getting a lot of detail on my single subs, it was helping with the final image, so I wasn't too worried, But and I carried on with it, but it was something that constantly bugged me. I looked around for second-hand chroma filters, or even Astrodon 3 nanometer S2 filters on the used market, but they just weren't coming up um, wrong size, or just weren't coming up full stop. And then a new one, well, at £539 for a Chroma S2 at a 1.25 inch, it was just uh, a little bit too much for me. So um, I just carried on persevering with the Bader. But then Antlia bought out filters, and at first they were the three and a half nanometer type, and I nearly went for those, but I was actually having trouble sourcing them. And then Antlia recently launched their three nanometer pro range and these are compared to Chroma and Astrodon very competitively priced um, I was able to pick up the S2 for £278 now that's £261 cheaper than the uh, equivalent Chroma so um, at first I was thinking that's quite a bit cheaper is it going to be comparable in quality um, so anyway, uh, we'll get the filter unpacked, um, show you everything that's there, we'll get it in my filter wheel and we'll have a look and see how good the filter performs on a target. So the filter wheel that I use is by ZWO, it's the um, uh, filter wheel with the 8 positions for uh, 1.25 inch uh, filters. Um, it really good filter wheel actually. Um, I have the um, the other filter wheel by ZWO of these size filters which only holds five 
and although it's a lovely small size and works really well it is a bit of a pain that you've got to take it apart and swap your filters around if you want to go between LRGB and SHO so I am thinking of actually changing that filter wheel for an, another one of these so that I've got the convenience of being able to do the whole range of filters in one go so once we get this open we'll remove the Bader 4.5 as I say it's a very nice filter but I'm really hoping that the extra narrower uh, 3 nanometer pass of the uh, Antlia is going to give me some improvements so I'll just put the Bader away and we'll get the new Antlia filter out so here's the Antlia, it comes in a really nice magnetically closed crystal case. Um, it's almost a shame that it comes in such nice packaging because once this filter is in the filter wheel, it's going to stay in there and this packaging is just going to sit on a shelf somewhere. Um, so it comes with a little report as well showing the uh, wavelength of the filter and that is at um, 671.6 nanometers. Um, it says that it's very effective at cutting out light pollution, especially from artificial sodium and mercury lights. So um, that would be good. And it also says that it does not suffer from halos because it has a very quick drop off and a good to excellent signal to noise ratio quality. So all the paperwork says good things and I just hope that it's going to actually be an improvement. On the price side, these are great. So. Um, you know, uh, it's, it's nearly half the price of a Chroma or Astrodon filter of an equivalent uh, model. So, um, yeah, it's, uh, if it performs as well at half the price, these are going to really grab the market, I think. Or Chroma and Astrodon are going to have to think about dropping their price. So we'll just get the old rocket blower on this and then we'll get this into the filter wheel and uh, some filters especially of this type I, I notice with my chroma ones they're a little bit deeper in the body to uh, other makes um, and if they're not fully screwed in they can actually foul on the edge on the sort of surface of the cover for the filter wheel so be aware of that make sure they are screwed all the way home uh, before you try and put the filter wheel back together right so that's gone in nicely and we'll get the filter wheel put back together now. So that's my imaging train back together and the last part is to put it all back on my scope and so I'm going to mount that back onto my CT10 and then what we're going to do now is look at some images of the S2 and see how it performs compared to my beta. Okay, so jumping into PixInsight, I've got the two images of the Pac-Man Nebula in front of me in S2. On the right, I have the beta 4.5 nanometer, and on the left, I've got the Antlia 3 nanometer, and there is a huge difference. Uh, I can see on the Bader not much nebulosity showing and the stars are really quite intense. The Antlia, the stars are much more uh, controlled and the nebulosity, well it's night and day, there's so much detail there. So I can really see a massive difference. The um, Obviously the 3 nanometer has a big advantage over the 4.5 nanometer. Um, I don't know uh, if that's what all the difference is or whether it is also down to the make of the filter too but I can only say that I'm over the moon with this and uh, I know that this filter helped uh, help me create a really good Pac-Man uh, image that I got when I did photograph this so I'm a really happy person with this filter and uh, I'll be honest uh, based on this I think I can recommend it so yeah really pleased the Antlia S2 3 nanometer filter. I think you can see that there's been an enormous improvement, especially on the filter that I had before, and I am extremely happy with it. So it, uh, it looks like it performs extremely well, even though it's a lot cheaper 
than the uh, equivalent chroma or astrodon filters. So I'm very happy. I'm also looking at now at uh, Antlia's got a range of uh, Series V Pro LRGB filters. So I'm actually looking to see if I can get myself a set of those. Um, and if I do, I will report back to you uh, my findings. So if you have any questions about the video that I've just done, please pop a question in the comment section below. I do try and answer all of my questions. And until next time, please take care and I'd like to wish you all clear skies.